Into today's video we take a look at the incredible plain of Jars. A truly unique historical site whose origins remain a mystery. The plain of Jars is a collection of large stone jars interspersed throughout the Xiankaoang Plain which is on the northern end of the Annamese Cordillera, the principal mountain range of Indochina. The stone structures are mostly made of sedimentary rock and, ranging from 3 to 10 feet in height each can weigh up to 14 tons. The jars lie in groups on the lower ridges of the hills surrounding the central plateau and upland valleys. Several quarry sites have been recorded, usually close to the jar sites. More than 90 jar sites have been identified. Each site has from 1 to 400 stone jars. Their shape is cylindrical with the bottom always wider than the top. The stone jars are undecorated, except for a single jar. This jar has a human, frogman bar relief carved on the exterior. Since most of the jars have lip rims, it is thought that the jars originally supported lids, although few stone lids have been found, this suggests that the bulk of lids were fashioned from perishable materials. Stone lids with animal carvings have been found at a few sites such as Ban Farkio. The origin of the jars is a total mystery, though archaeologists believe that they were originally used between 1,500 and 2,000 years ago. Many researchers have theorized that the jars may have once served as funeral urns or food storage. A local Laotian legend believes that the jars were created by Kun Chung, an ancient king of giants who lived in the highlands. It is said that Chung, after fighting a long and victorious battle, created the jars to brew huge amounts of celebratory Lao Lao rice wine. The plain of jars received relatively little Western attention until the 1930s, when French archaeologist Madeleine Colony began work in the area. Though previous reports of the jars had cited the existence of goods such as carnelian beads, jewelry, and axes, the site was mostly looted by the time Colony arrived. A cave at Site 1 is a natural limestone formation with an opening to the northwest and two man-made holes at the top. These holes are thought to have been chimneys for a crematorium. When Colony excavated inside the cave in the early 1930s and found material to support a crematorium theory. She also recorded and excavated at 12 plain of jar sites and published two volumes with her findings in 1935. She concluded that the Plain of Jars was an Iron Age burial site. Inside the jars she found, embedded in black organic soil, colored glass beads and burnt teeth and bone fragments, sometimes from more than one individual. Around the stone jars, she found human bones, pottery fragments, iron and bronze objects, glass and stone beads, ceramic weights and an charcoal. The bone and teeth inside the jars show signs of cremation, while the burials surrounding the jars yield unburnt secondary burial bones. After the work by Colony, the next work was done in November 1994, when Professor A.G. Nitter of Kagoshima University and Lao archaeologist Thongsa Sai of Onkamdi studied and mapped Site 1. Nitter claimed that the surrounding burial pits were contemporaneous to the jars, as they were cut into the surface on which the jars had been placed. Nitter believed the jars were symbolic monuments to mark the surrounding burials. He dated the plain of jars to the late 2nd or early 1st millennium BC based on the burial urn and associated grave goods. They undertook surveys and excavations between 1994 and 1996, supported by the Australian National University. Siavon Kamdi and Peter Bellwood interpreted the stone jars as a central person's primary or secondary burial, surrounded by secondary burials of family members. Variations in the practices of cremation inside jars and secondary burial outside jars, as noted by Colony, have proven difficult to explain. The cremated remains seem to mainly belong to adolescents. While the bomb clearance operations did not involve emptying the jars and thus no additional evidence could be gathered, Van den Berg suggested that the stone jars initially may have been used to distill the dead bodies and that the cremated remains within the jars represent the most recent phase in the plane of jars. The jars with smaller apertures may reflect the diminishing need to place an entire body inside. The suggestion that the jars, as in traditional Southeast Asian royal mortuary practices, functioned as distilling vessels, was put forward by R. Engelhardt and P. Rogers in 2001. 
In contemporary funerary practices followed by Thai, Cambodian, and Laotian royalty, the corpse of the deceased is placed into an urn during the early stages of the funeral rites, at which time the soul of the deceased is believed to be undergoing gradual transformation from the earthly to the spiritual world. The ritual decomposition is later followed by cremation and secondary burial. The royal burials are across watercourses from the habitation areas in a geographically high, prominent area. Among the Black Thai people who have been in the region at least since the 11th century, the upper classes are cremated in the belief that it will release their spirits to heaven, while commoners are buried, leaving their spirits to remain on earth. Colony connected the location of the Jars sites to ancient trade routes, in particular with the salt trade. She assumed that salt was a commodity sought after by the plain of Jars people, which brought traders to the Shangkuan Plateau. The Shangkuang area is rich in metallic minerals, mainly due to granite intrusions and associated hydrothermal activity. Though the Xiangkuang plain remains the central site of the Jars, similar clusters can be connected to form a linear path all the way to northern India. There are other Jar clusters in parts of Asia which also led to the belief that the Jars were part of a large trade route. Some historians believe that the Jars collected rainwater for caravan travelers to use during the dry season. Travelers would use the water and then leave behind a variety of offerings in the jars, which would explain the previous sightings of jewelry and other items. Stone discs have also been found. The discs, which differ from the lids, have at least one flat side and are grave markers which were placed on the surface to cover or mark a burial pit. These grave markers appear more rarely than jars but are found in close proximity. Similarly, the stone grave markers are unworked, but have been intentionally placed to mark a grave. To the north of Shangkuang an extensive network of intentionally placed largely unworked stones marking elaborate burial pits and chambers are known as the Standing Stones of Huafan. These have been date to the Bronze Age. Despite becoming a UNESCO World Heritage in 2019, the area still remains one of the most dangerous archaeological sites in the world. Between May 1964 and the summer of 1969, the plain of Jars was heavily bombed by the U.S. Air Force operating against North Vietnamese and Pathet Lao communist forces. This included 262 million antipersonnel cluster bombs. An estimated 80 million of these did not explode and remain a deadly threat to the population. With some of these weapons still causing injuries to this day. As such, only Sites 1, 2, 3 and the quarry are open to visitors. Any visit to the Jar sites takes one past numerous large bomb craters and crater clusters. Further adding to the area's mystique, the many varied casings of these American bombs are used extensively to decorate houses and roadsides in nearby Afonsavan, the provincial capital. Scrap metal collection is one of the major economic activities here. Researchers have traced the jars back to a quarry a few miles outside of Fonsavan. The area was also used extensively during the war by the Pathet Laos, Lao Nation, the communist political movement, who hid in natural and human-made caves here in the quarry. Either way, the real reason for the creation of these jars remains a mystery, despite some very interesting options being offered. What do you think they were for? Drop a like and please do subscribe. Thank you for watching.